Holy cow, that's the first one. I am so excited. Hey, what's going on YouTube? Eric Barnes here. I'm excited today to tell you about raising discus and five things that helped me along the way uh, to have success raising discus. As you can see, I have a pretty uh, decent uh, spawning back here. I'm gonna tell you exactly how I did that and five things that got me there uh, without losing a single fish actually uh, after they were free swimming. Anyways, long story short, let me get right into it. Uh, number one, the first thing that's most important to realize that you're not a hatchery, you know? If this thing's gonna take uh, patience. You know, if you're doing this at home just for fun as an extra hobby, uh, you don't have like a facility uh, that, you're, that you're breeding these fish in uh, and it's gonna take time. Uh, so patience is gonna be extremely important. Uh, I know my pair, it must have been uh, at least 20, 20 attempts just to wigglers. You can't have the birds and the, bee, the bees talk with your fish. It, no one's actually teaching them what they're doing or how they're doing it. So they'll usually get to a different part of the process and fail. Uh, and then the next time they get a little bit further along and then fail, you know, you'll get them to lay eggs and then the male won't know how to fertilize them. And then the next time he'll realize he has to fertilize them. He'll fertilize them, then the eggs will, they'll turn white uh, because they're not fanning them correctly. They're not getting the right amount of oxygen. The tank's not set up the exact uh, right way. There's bacteria in the, in the tank. One way or another, uh, some of them will turn white and usually spread to the other eggs. Eventually, they uh, they will figure out that if they eat the white ones or pick the white ones out, the more of the batch will make it. They'll get to free swimmers and they're gonna or wigglers and they're gonna say, "What the heck is going on?" They don't know what what's happening to their eggs. They're wiggling and then they're like, "Oh, okay, those are the babies, right?" So then these babies start swimming at them and start latching on to eat them, and they go, "What the heck's going on?" They wig and they they eat them. So long story short, you have to have patience because. They're, they're, you know, they're babies. A lot of discus can actually get to 10 years old, which means that they age pretty similar to dogs. So the average year, like seven dog years in a, in a discus year, uh, you don't have a seven year old dog that's sexually mature to pair off. Um, this is gonna be the same way. They're gonna to need to take some time to, to mature, need to take some time to learn how to spawn. Um, so by far, number one, is number one because it's the most important. You gotta have patience uh, and, and you gotta actually give them a chance. So I use reverse osmosis. I had to do that because the eggs were fungusing every single time. The thing, two things that helped with that were water changes. Uh, and number three is methylene blue. So I don't think you have to do water ch or don't have to do reverse osmosis uh, water. Everyone's water is different. But uh, if you have the methylene blue, you probably are gonna be okay, or, or at least would help with the fungusing of the eggs. Hard, hard water also, more likely that the eggs will fungus. Um, so reverse osmosis water, that definitely helps with the fungusing. And uh, methylene blue has really helped me with the fungusing as well. First dose of the methylene blue the first time, uh, that's when they got all the way to wigglers. So uh, number four, all right, so as you can see, there's algae in my tank. The parents, especially when they're young, parents they they get very uneasy when you walk up to the tank and they have fry either feeding on them or you know even even eggs uh and if there's too much disruption in the tank it's possible that they'll eat the eggs or to give them some space um i know some people will think because in the in the breeding facilities right their tanks are all spotless um i know i learned a lot from uh, jack watley i love watching jack watley videos the, the, the fact of the matter is we don't have a a facility in our basements, you know, or in our living rooms or whatever it is, um, you know, so we have to bring it down to a level to where the average hobbyists can do it. So a lot of times the extra medications that, you know, the different powders and things, I haven't felt to be necessary, you know, a little bit of methylene blue, everything was good. I'm sure someone in the comments gonna be like, oh, methylene blue is terrible for this reason or that reason. I'm sure there's good and bad, you know, all I know is that they stop fungusing and this happened so you can kind of take that you know it's, it, some people like it, some people don't like it it works for me and the last thing so multiple different types of food i do feed brine shrimp i'll uh, i'll crush up some pellets um i'll crush up some flakes i'll put that in there with the brine shrimp sometimes or just feed it without the brine shrimp if i'm waiting for another batch to be done the other important thing when i first hatch i spray first bites uh in there as they were learning to come off of the mom you know I didn't want to spray a bunch of brine shrimp into a tank that wasn't gonna get eaten and thus fouling my water 
So the first couple times when I wasn't really sure if uh, they were gonna actually come off of the mom or dad and latch on and start and start eating uh, off of the food that I was giving them, uh, I kept my water from fouling a lot faster by doing that. And then when I saw them eating, I began putting in brine shrimp as well. Uh, as far as uh, breeding behaviors go, man, this was there was a lot of interesting behavior going on. They might, you might even see them behind me right now. They are. Oh man, they've been pretty aggressive with each other. So long story short, they were in here and they were just happy as can be a while, months. And um, they bred and then all of a sudden I came up to the tank and the female was being extremely aggressive with the male to the point where the, the, uh, the babies were having a hard time staying with the adults or with the parents. So I had to remove the male. Uh, when I put the male back in here, I have an albino in here as well that started uh, pursuing the male, I believe. And um, they started doing their mating dance and she began cleaning off a spot for them to put eggs and he then started following along. And when I put mom back in the tank, not good things started happening. And I think she picked up on what was going on. You can see them over here still going at it. They're trying to figure out, you know, how to readjust or whatever. Um, the female's always attacking the, uh, the albino, uh, trying to keep her away from the male. And uh, so I thought that was hilarious. You also see the female here, always on this side of the tank because she wants to be as close to the babies as she possibly can. I had to lower the water level so they could find the parents, but they found them and then they uh, started eating. This is about two or three days old at this point. About three weeks old now. And this is where I got tired of doing water changes and I transferred them over to my aquaponic system where I could up their feedings from about four times a day to eight times a day without having to worry about water changes. More on that coming soon. But once I did that, the size really uh, exploded at that point. This is the most up-to-date video that I have. About a month and a half to two months after free swimming, they're about the size of half dollars. They're growing incredibly fast. And as you can see, their blue is really starting to come in. And over the next couple of weeks, it'll come in a lot more. One of the huge things, the reasons why people are usually deterred to breeding, is because of all the work, all the water changes you have to do. Uh, in the video soon, if it's not already out, uh, I'm going to be explaining how I never, ever have to do water changes and feed these guys so much, like six times a day. It's crazy. And uh, never have had to do water changes on this system. And I get a ton of free food out of it. All right. So in conclusion, you need number one, patience. This isn't going to happen overnight. Get yourself a couple juveniles. Give them a couple months or a year uh, to get to know each other and they'll eventually pair off. And then give them time to learn what they're doing with, from there. Number two, RO water and water changes, which if you see here, I have an aquaponic system and I connected it to my grow out tanks <laughs> to totally get out of water changes, man. Like, that's the coolest thing. Uh, it's the worst part about the fish hobby and I never have to do it on this system. Number three, obviously methylene blue. Number four, give them some space. They get all worked up if you get up on top of them. You definitely put them in the, the tank in a place that's not a highly trafficked part of the house. And then number five, make sure you give them a diverse diet, guys. If you thought this was valuable, please like and subscribe down below. If you want to see how I've created a whole system that never needs water changes and gives me free food, uh, go, to, go to my channel. Uh, and if, you, if it's not out yet, it will be out soon. So I'm excited to talk to people more about combining the two hobbies of aquaponics and fish keeping and, heck, maybe even breeding because it's made the maintenance so much easier not having to do water changes on the system. Some guys. Thanks for watching DIY by Eric Barnes. You guys have a great day.